Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Elizabeth Taylor, George Murphy, and Mary Astor in Cynthia. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Closing night in the theater has always been a very special and sentimental occasion. When one looks back on the past and its associations with warm gratitude, and I feel that now very deeply. Gratitude to the many people with whom I've worked, the stars and the supporting cast, the musicians and the stagehands. And gratitude also to you of the listening audience who have been so loyal and so responsive with your many friendly letters. Looking around for a play to end the season, we could find nothing more appropriate or more delightful than metro golden Mayor's screen hit, Cynthia. A picture that every member of your family will enjoy. Because Cynthia is a story of simple American family life. It's tears and laughter, loves and disappointments. And our stars from the original screen cast are loved by families throughout America. Elizabeth Taylor, George Murphy, and Mary Astor. Based on the Broadway stage success, The Rich Full Life by Vina Del Mar, Cynthia is Hollywood's answer to your popular demand for rich full entertainment. Just as Lux Flakes are the answer to your demand for a safe, sure way to care for your precious fabrics. And between now and the last week in August when we'll be back again, happy holidays to all of you. And may Lux Flakes help to make them so, whether at home or at the beach or in the mountains. It's curtain time, and here's Act One of Cynthia, starring Elizabeth Taylor in the title role, George Murphy as Larry Bishop, and Mary Astor as Louise. Looking back over 17 years, it seems strange that I never really met Larry Bishop until we were finishing our junior year in college. That was the spring that Larry hit the home run and won the 1930 championship for Wyandotte. There was a party that night at the crew house. I remember showing off at the piano, hoping Larry would notice me. Well, he did, finally. And the next thing we knew, we were in the middle of the lake just drifting along in a canoe. You know, you're awfully good at the piano, Louise. I'll be better when I get back. Back? Where from? Vienna. After I finish college, I'm going to the Vienna Conservatory. Well, gee, that's wonderful. I'm going to Vienna, too. Oh, Larry. Well, sure. As soon as I'm through medical school, I'm going there for all my postgraduate work. Oh, well, maybe we'll meet. Uh, what are you going to do this summer? Oh, I guess go back to Napoleon. Napoleon? Napoleon, Illinois. That's my hometown. Oh. Yeah, every summer I help out Mr. Dingle's hardware store. But someday I'm going to have the finest clinic in the whole darn state. Uh, it's going to be a long summer. Not for me, Louise. That is, not if I know you'll be here in the fall. Larry, I, I'm here now. It was a long summer. But September came at last. And then just before Thanksgiving, Larry Bishop and I were married. A year later... (laughs) Our daughter wasn't born in Vienna. No, the Napoleon Maternity Hospital. She was a lovely child, our Cynthia. But frail and delicate, and that meant doctor bills. Months and years of doctor bills. Somehow there never was enough left over to go back to college, to our medicine and music. And by the time Cynthia was 15 years old, the future had passed us by. We never even talked about Vienna. Well, hello, Cynthia. Hello, McQuillan. Sit down, honey. The doctor will see you in a minute. Not going to the football game today, hmm? How can I, McQuillan? It might turn cold and be bad for my chest. I guess it's nice having your own uncle for a doctor. Oh, well, there'll be plenty of other games. Besides, nobody ever asks me to go. 
And I'd die before I'd go without a date. I can't even have a dog, McQuillan. Uncle Fred called Daddy at the hardware store yesterday. I'm allergic to dogs. Well, maybe you are, honey. McQuillan, do you think all these shots I'm taking are doing me any good? Nurse in this office isn't supposed to think. It means coming here every afternoon. I don't even have time. Well, to... Cynthia, how are you feeling today? Fine, thank you, Uncle Fred. Mother and Dad all right? Oh, they are. Good. Be seeing you all tonight for dinner, I suppose. Well, your color seems better. Just continue with the B-complex, McQuillan. Yes, Doctor. Did that daughter of mine come home with you, Cynthia? Well, no, Uncle Fred. I think Virginia went to the game. Boys, boys, boys. That's all she ever thinks about. Well, that's one thing your father never has to worry about. Now then, we're keeping away from all fresh fruits, aren't we? Yes, Uncle Fred. Can't help but keep away, Doctor. Nothing in the market these days. Just apples. Well, then, let's stay away from apples, especially apples. Yes, Uncle Fred. And go straight home after your shot, Cynthia. Getting chilly. I will, as soon as I finish my singing lesson. Oh, oh yes, nothing like vocal exercise to strengthen the thoracic regions. All right, McQuillan, take Cynthia into the lab. There are no more scales, Cynthia. No, 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 I, I, I refuse. Up and down, up and down. Singing is for pleasure, Cynthia, not for health. Oh, I know, Professor Rosencrantz. But Uncle Fred says that practicing scales will strengthen my thoracic regions. Then for him you sing scales, but for me you sing songs. Yes, Professor. Ah, you have a nice voice, darling. A sweet voice. And next Tuesday, we have tryouts for the high school operator. There may be a nice part could be arranged for you, Cynthia. Do you really think I'm good enough? Well, you are my friend. And I am the impresario of Napoleon High School. Why not? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, but then Uncle Fred... I... Uh, Cynthia, it is my idea not even to tell Uncle Fred. Not tell him? This we keep a big secret, Cynthia. Just you and I, huh? Anyway, until after the trials, eh? Here, here, I, I, I give you a song to learn. Take this home. Oh, no more scales. Eh, what this will do for the uh, thoracic regions, I will give no guarantee. But for the heart, I am in such a pleasure. <laughs> Stop by the store, Cynthia. Mother needs that percolator top. Now, uh, you go straight home with it, won't you, honey? I will, Daddy. Hey, uh, a button up. Keep that collar up. It's cold out. Yes, Dad. Well, uh, Gus, now let's see. Where were we? Well, I'm just a real estate agent in this deal, Larry, but you're living in Thatch's house, and Thatch has made up his mind to sell it. But, Gus, we've lived there for 16 years. Thatcher can't just throw us out like that. The price ain't bad, Larry. Yeah, but 3000 down, though. I don't own this hardware stair at the store, Gus. I just work here. Larry, your wife, uh, Lou's got some money in the bank, ain't she? Yes, her father's insurance money, Gus, but that belongs to Lou. I wouldn't even ask it. Yeah, I know what you mean, but where are you going to find another house to rent? Yeah. Larry. Uh, yes, J.M.? Oh, excuse me, Gus. The boss wants to see me. Come on in the office, Larry. Larry, I ain't feeling good. Is that back troubling you again, J.M.? Awful. Afraid I'll have to bake her out a couple of months down in Florida. Think you can run this store without me? Well, I've managed every winter up till now, sir. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, J.M., as long as I'm here, about that house of mine... I already advised you about that house. Buy it, my boy, buy it. Well, I'd sure like to, but uh, the, the problem is, well, uh, you remember last year you said that if sales kept up, that maybe we could talk about a raise. Well, I figured that $10 a week more would see me through fine, J.M. Larry, you've been with me 16 years. I took you on here spank in the middle of the Depression. There you were, married, stone broke, and with a sick baby. Now, that's right, J.M. Larry, I'm going to give you $100,000. What? Well, g gosh, J.M., that, that's wonderful, but I, uh, I, I don't get it. What's the income on $100,000 of 3%? Well, that's $3,000 a year. Well, that's what you're getting now, and that's what I'm promising you as long as our doors stay open. The income on a cool hundred thousand. Oh, well, that's awfully nice of you, J.M., but uh, about the house, I... Oh, well, you went over to see the boys at the bank. Tell them I said you're a hundred percent risk. Oh, then you'll endorse my note? Larry, boy, don't put words in my mouth. Ask your brother-in-law to endorse your notes. Married to your own sister, ain't he? Biggest doctor in town, ain't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll ask him, J.M. Well, thanks. Thanks anyway. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I still don't think Uncle Fred was very nice to your dinner tonight, Daddy. Well, Cynthia, I suppose we've got to look at his side of it, too. But the way he talked to you, and Carrie, too. Mother, what would happen if we didn't go to Uncle Fred's and Aunt Carrie's every Thursday night for dinner? We'd survive. Where are you going, dear? 
Upstairs. I'm working bad, I guess. Uh, we'll be up soon, honey. Larry, why didn't you tell me about the house first? I could have told you Fred would never endorse your note. Well, you know how Fred is. It, but it's pretty nice, just the same, having a doctor in the family for Cynthia. Well, that's his business, and we've paid him regularly. Yes, even before we paid the butcher. I know, Lou, I know. But what's that got to do with the house? You don't want us to buy it, do you, Lou? No. One of us has to remember, Larry. Remember what? That Napoleon was supposed to be the first stop on a long journey. Oh, there she goes again. Every time she gets upset, she starts talking that nonsense about a journey. Well, I'd rather not talk about it anymore tonight, though. Well, okay, but, but what am I going to tell Gus Wood? Oh, tell him we're buying a chicken ranch in Arizona, that we're going to raise eggs or feathers or anything you can think of. Okay, Lou, okay. Why don't we go to Arizona? Arizona? I heard you talking before, you and Dad. <laughs> well, I wouldn't start packing. I'd like to go any place, a million miles from Napoleon. Is it that bad, baby? It isn't just that I never do anything, never go to parties or dances. It's just that no one ever asks me anymore, because they know I can't. Oh, but you don't understand. Of course I understand. And so will you when you have a little girl of your own. I'll never understand why Daddy and Uncle Fred treat me as though I were always sick. Even when I'm well. Well, it's because you've been through so much. We have to be careful. Cynthia, don't you realize this is the first winter that you haven't been in bed with the flu? Now, let's be sensible, dear. Let's get through this one winter without anything. But, Mother, I... Tell you what. Tomorrow night, we'll have a fitting on the blue formal that you didn't get to wear last year. And when the spring dance comes around, why, you'll be in there with the best of them. Yes, Mother... Only... Only what? Only you can't go to a spring dance unless someone asks you. All right, boys and girls. Class is dismissed. Oh, uh, just one moment, please. Of course, you've all noticed that Richard Latham was back in classes with us today. After serving in the United States Navy... And after one day of school, Richard has just informed me that he's going to stay with us. One of your first assignments, Richard, will be staying after school today. <laughs> I've made an appointment for you with Shakespeare and Cynthia Bishop. Oh, Cynthia, you, um, you won't mind helping Richard catch up with class, will you? Why, well, I'd be glad to, Miss Brady. Thank you. All right, class, that's all. Fredonia, imagine. My droopy cousin staying after school with Ricky. How come she gets all the breaks? Oh, it must be wonderful to have a brain, Stella. Oh, I don't know. There are other things. Goodbye, Ricky. Well, Ricky, I guess Miss Brady wants me to tell you about Macbeth. The first thing you learn in the Navy is to play dumb so nobody will notice you. You see what you get for being smart? Me. Oh, I don't mind, really. Uh, w won't you sit down? Say, will this take long? No, I have to be somewhere by quarter past four anyway. You do? Oh, a date, huh? Oh, well, a uh, sort of an appointment. I got sort of an appointment myself. Boy, that Stella Adams is really something. Uh, yes. Oh, well, about Shakespeare. Honey, I don't remember you. How come? Oh, I must have been a freshman when you left. I guess people change. Yeah, they sure do. Well, you mind if I eat an apple? Oh, no, go right ahead. Uh, have you ever read Macbeth? Heck no. Well, if you're going to catch up with the class... Say, about Stella. Is she a friend of yours? Well, she's a very good friend of Donnie's. Oh, that's my cousin for Oh. Uh, about Macbeth. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, Macbeth is a Scottish chief who kills the king of Scotland, and then he's haunted by his guilty conscience. Me too. Here, have a bite of apple. Oh, no, thank you. Go on, it's good for you. Oh, but Uncle Fred said... Oh, go on, take a bite. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks a lot. Why, this dress is going to look just lovely, dear. Now, let me look at that seam. Cynthia! Oh, oh yes, Mother? Well, I don't believe you heard a word I said. Oh, I, I was just thinking... I said, let me look at that seam. Oh, Mother, if I could only have one dress without such a high neck. Oh, high necks are coming in this year, aren't they, Larry? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Mother, were you scared the first time you sat next to Dad? What'd she say? 
Why, uh, um, oh, heavens no, but he was petrified. Oh, that's her story, kiddo. Well, I mean the first time you met. What did you find to talk about? Oh, millions of things. Like what? Baseball. Baseball? In Vienna. Vienna? Daddy, how does a person get started on a subject like Vienna? Huh? Well, uh, well, once upon a time, kiddo, I had a notion that I was going there to study medicine. Oh, why didn't you? Well, I, uh... Oh, sometimes uh, it's awfully get... late, Cynthia. We'll work on the dress tomorrow. Up to bed now, honey. Good night, honey. Good night, Daddy. Mother, did Daddy ever seem absolutely unattainable? Oh, no, just hard to get. But I broke him down. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, honey. Good night, Mother. Say, Lou, what kind of a question was that? Were you scared the first time you ever sat next to me? I think your daughter's got herself sat next to me. Huh? Oh. Our stars, Elizabeth Taylor, George Murphy, and Mary Astor, will return for Act Two of Cynthia in a moment. What was that sketch you were showing the girls, Libby? Oh, that was one I made of a gorgeous nightgown Barbara Stanwyck wears in The Other Love. I'm going to make one like it for myself. It's simply out of this world. That's the way Barbara looks in any costume she wears. Uh Uh-huh. And she does wear some stunning negligees in the hospital scene. I don't wonder David Niven is the doctor and Richard Conte are both in love with her in the picture. Barbara's a fine actress as well as a beautiful one. That's right, Mr. Kennedy. She even insisted on doing all her own movie stunts in The Other Love. She gave the crew at Enterprise Studios quite a scare when her horse bolted and she had to jump from the buggy she was driving in. A good thing she didn't land in a real hospital. With such lovely gowns to wear, she'd be glamorous even there. I begin to suspect, Libby, that you're fond of pretty lingerie. (laughs) Well, it certainly is a weakness of mine. That's why I was so thrilled when Barbara let me copy her gown. I hope you're going to take the same good care of it the studio did of Barbara's and use Lux Flakes. Well, naturally. I've been a Lux girl practically all my life. Some girls don't really appreciate just how much harm wrong washing can do to nice things. Take identical slips, as a famous laboratory did, and wash them two different ways. You'd be amazed to see how soon slips washed the wrong way, with strong suds, hot water, or handled roughly, looked faded and old. The slips given Lux Care stayed color fresh and attractive three times as long. Any girl hates to have pretty things wear out. Of course. And as you know, Libby, you'll soon have more pretty under things if you give them Lux Care. Instead of replacing drab, faded things so often, you can buy extra new ones. Have three times as many. Yes. And plenty of lovely lingerie certainly makes a girl feel glamorous. So no wonder Lux is the favorite care for under things with girls everywhere, just as it is among the studios here in Hollywood. We return you now to William Keeley. Here's the second act of tonight's play, starring Elizabeth Taylor as Cynthia, George Murphy as Larry Bishop, and Mary Astor as Louise. This has been a big afternoon for Cynthia, the first afternoon in months that she has not stopped by at Uncle Fred's. Not only that, but she's just been selected as one of the stars in the high school operetta. Nothing in all her antiseptic life has been quite so exciting. And now, wonder of wonders, Ricky Latham is walking home with her. Gosh, Cynthia, I didn't know you could sing. Why didn't you tell me about your voice? Well, you've been so busy talking about Stella. Ouch. (laughs) Hey, look, it's starting to snow, so you better button up. Why did you say that? Well, it just meant it's cold. My ears are freezing. Oh. Oh, but I love the cold, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, but what are you opening up your coat for? And don't you just hate those people who are always bumbling themselves up? Personally, I can't imagine anything more dull. Yeah, but when it's cold, it's... it's cold. (laughs) Say, this is going to be nice, huh? You the star, the operator, and me the stage manager. And don't forget, rehearsal tomorrow at Rosie's studio. Oh, I won't forget. Oh, don't you just love walking in the snow? Uh, you suppose it's all right if I walk up to your door with you? Oh, yes, Ricky. It's all right. Cynthia? 
Hello, Mother. This is Ricky Latham, my mother. Well, I'm very glad to meet you. Same here, Mrs. Bishop. Uh, let's go in the living room, shall we? Uh, no, no, thanks. I, I was just, uh, well, glad to have met you. Thank you. Uh, see you tomorrow, Cynthia. Bye, Ricky. Oh, Mother, isn't he nice? Cynthia, look at you. Look at me? It's snowing and no scarf on your head. Oh, Mother. And your I... neck wide open. Where have you been? Well, I... Uh, I happened to run into Ricky after I left Uncle Fred. It seemed like I was there forever. Why? Well, the nurse was busy and uh, with my singing lesson and all. Well, for heaven's sakes, Mother. Don't you believe me? I haven't said a word. All right. I didn't go to Uncle Fred's. I didn't get my vitamin shot. Why not? I stayed at school, Mother. I've been given a wonderful part in the operetta, and I want to do it more than anything else in the world. Well, let's talk it over. But you don't mean just talk, Mother. You mean discuss it. And let's think about it. And let's make up our minds. Isn't that what always happens? Daddy's consulted first. And then he says, well, let's leave it up to Fred. He's the doctor in the family. And hasn't the answer always been no? No, now taper down, honey. Taper down. I'll talk to Daddy later. Oh, it's all for my own good, of course. But I'm sick of it, Mother. I'd like to do something at school besides get A's. And I'd like one friend besides Redonia, who incidentally happens to, to bore me. Cynthia, I got news for you. Redonia bores me, too. Mother! <laughs> heart's so set on it, Larry. After all, it is the operetta. I know, Lou, I know, but I still say we ought to ask Fred. After all, he's the doctor. Oh, the oughtn't we to ask Carrie, too, and Fredonia? Oh, and... now, Lou. And that boy I told you about, that Ricky Latham. I've seen him, Larry. He's nice. But you can't expect him or any other boy to stay interested in a girl who isn't allowed to do anything. Now, Lou, I'm not going to be stubborn about this. You mean that? Well, of course I mean it. If Fred says it's okay, it's certainly okay with me. Now, all we have to do is... Here she comes now. Uh, finished your work, kiddo? Not quite, Daddy. Mother, do you suppose I... Cynthia. Oh, excuse me. Uh, do you suppose I... Lou, Lou, call Fred. Call him right Daddy, away. Daddy, I only... Oh, darling, darling, oh, you're Mother, not... I've done it again. I've got something. Oh. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, Fred, will you please stop grunting and tell me what's wrong with my daughter? This is a sick child. She's got the flu. Oh, no, Uncle Fred. Nothing two or three weeks in bed won't cure. Now, if she comes to my office for her shot, instead of be hanging around school till all hours... Oh, I know all about it, Lou. Fredonia told me. I don't doubt it. If you feel like encouraging Cynthia beyond her capacity, that's your affair. But try to have some consideration for all the hard work I have to do. Oh, phone me if her temperature goes any higher. Blizzard or no, I'll be over. Mother. What is it, dear? Would you call Professor Rosencrantz? All right. Tell him I won't be at rehearsal tomorrow. And she's got the flu, Professor Rosencrantz. She can't be here. She's got the flu. All right, all right, Fredonia. Don't be so happy about it. Oh, Ricky. Gosh, what a break for Cynthia. But it was so silly. Or even trying out. Well, tell her as soon as she can have visitors that oh, I... It'll probably be weeks yet. Poor thing. She's sick so much of the time. That's the reason she could never go steady. You kidding? I'm certainly grateful I'm so healthy and always around. Yeah. Well, uh, be sure to remember me to her. Yes, Ricky, I will. Still a little temperature, dear. Not much, though. Oh, gosh. At low! At low! Sounds like Donny. Yes, Donny? Father says it's passing and for me not to go in. But I just had to stop by and see how poor Cynthia is. Well, thanks, Donny. She's much better. Oh, she is? Oh. Well, well, well tell her that Stella's got her part in the operetta. I've just come from rehearsal. I'm sure you just ran here with the news. Thank you very much. Mother. Yes, sir. Ask her if there are any messages for me. Uh, uh, Joni, uh, any messages for Cynthia? No. Oh, oh, yes. Stella sends her love. Bye. 
Eyes running, darling? You know, mine always run a little, too, when I have the flu. Professor Rosencrantz. Well, I certainly didn't expect to see you here tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah t- t- tonight is the operator, Mrs. Bishop, and, and nervous I am, yeah, but uh, enthusiastic I am not. May I go up and see Cynthia for a minute, Oh, please? she's downstairs now. Cynthia, look who's here. Professor Rosencrantz. Cynthia, tonight it is the performance, and what does that mean unless the prima donna receives her flowers, eh? Here. Oh, oh, thank you, Professor. They are for the wonderful performance you are going to give next year. The the doctor don't change his mind. You you cannot even sit in the audience. No, the, the night air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be his right, darling. I, I, I say good night now. Take care. Good night, Professor. Good night. Good night. And tell Stella I wish her lots of luck. In her voice, we can hope for luck yet? Uh, this song we have to take out because her voice is no top. That song we have to take out because she has no bottom. And her middle? Ugh, luck we will need. Cynthia. Mother, not even being able to go. No, no, honey. Cynthia, when I was your age, there were things I had my heart set on, too. But you will find out that things that happen now aren't really important. Why, you have a wonderful life ahead of you. A rich, full life with a husband and a home and children. You're still so young, dear. You were young, too. Cynthia, from now on, things will be different. I promise you. How can they? Daddy won't change. Uncle Fred won't change. But we will, Cynthia. We will. Cynthia Stella, she's back in school. Who cares about Cynthia? You don't know what's happened, Zoni. Probably about the most exciting and dramatic event in my life, that's all. I just got a telegram from Beulah Adams in Chicago. Beulah Adams? If I could just get to Chicago this Saturday, she's got a date for me with a college man. Stella? A college man? But our dance is this Friday. Oh, a high school prom. This is a college fraternity dance. Oh, well, what can you tell Ricky? Well, well, it's practically standing him up. Fredonia, as my best and dearest friend... I'm relying on you to think of something. What? Well, I've got a brilliant idea. Look, your grandmother in Chicago has had a sudden heart attack, see? And you'll have to leave suddenly. You could even tell Ricky it was coronary. That's a real medical term. Oh, Donnie, that's wonderful. I'll tell him right now. Hiya, Donnie. Oh, hello, Willie. Poor, poor Stella. Huh? She's just had the most terrible news. She'll have to go to Chicago. Her poor dear grandmother has a coronary. She looks pretty happy about it, if you ask me. She's just trying to be brave. Don't you understand? Oh. And do you realize what this means? Stella was going to the prom with Ricky Latham, and now Ricky won't have a date. Boy, I'm sure glad nothing's going to bust up our date. Oh, but don't you think that's terrible, considering Ricky was in the service? Yeah, it's awful. Willie, would you be willing to break your date with me? Oh, no, gee whiz, do Oh, it I... seems the least we can do, Willie. I'll go to the prom with Ricky. But then I'll be stuck. You could take Cynthia. Cynthia? The pill swallower? Well? But at the last minute, I'll be left high and dry again. She just isn't reliable. William Parker, I'm just beginning to realize what you really are. Small and and selfish and, and unpatriotic. Oh, well, all right, I'll ask her. Cynthia, uh, before you go to lunch, I... Uh, oh, hello, Willie. Uh, how do you feel? Oh, I'm fine, Danny. You sure? Mm-hmm. Donnie's going to the dance with Ricky. Oh. Oh, it's all right with me. You see, Stella's going to have to go to Chicago, so that left Ricky without a date, and so I figured that, well, what with him being a service veteran and all that, Donnie ought to go with him. That was very considerate. And, uh, I was wondering... Yes? I mean, well, heck, I'd be very glad to take you, Cynthia, if you think you can make it. Well, I was a dance. 
Thank you, Willie. Oh, that's okay. And Cynthia, please, take care of yourself. <laughs> Yes, Donnie, she's right here. Hold on. It's for you, Cynthia. Hello? Cynthia, and shove up all the awful double-crossing tricks. Well, that's me, your own flesh and blood. Oh, don't me. do a thing like that to me. I never want to speak to you again, as, but as long as either one of us lives. She hung up. Sweet-tempered little monster. What was that all about? I don't know, Mother. I was invited to the spring prom. Oh, you were? By Willie Parker. Well, but didn't Aunt Carrie say Donnie was going with him? Well, yes, she was. But now she's going with Ricky Latham, so... Hi. Oh. Hello. Mother, look, it's Ricky. Well, just don't stand there. He looks honest. I think we ought to let him in. Hello, Ricky. Hello. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Bishop. Good afternoon, Ricky. Oh, I uh, hope you'll excuse me, Ricky. I'm right in the midst of um, uh, baking a cake. Uh, High kitchen, huh? Uh, well, uh... Won't you sit down, Ricky? Oh, I'll only be a minute, Cynthia. Only, it's kind of complicated. Well, anyway, Stella... Oh, is... yes, I know. She had to leave town. Yeah. So, Doni said something about my going to the dance with her. But that left Willie Parker without a Which date. Which wasn't and... at all fair to Willie Parker. Yeah. So, I've been talking it over with him, and he went to see Doni, and I've come to ask you. Well, well, the dance is Friday night, and... I thought if... You... Oh, I'd love to. You would? Oh, that's swell. I didn't know if you'd be able to go out at night. Oh, but I feel just fine. Well, it's a date, then. Oh, did I mention the dance is Friday? Oh, yes, I, I believe it is Friday. Yeah, well, I'll see you Friday, then. So long. Bye. not, Ricky. I'll tell her. Goodbye. Who was that, Lou? Ricky Latham. Oh, what'd he want? He wanted to know if Cynthia could go to the dance tonight. Well, uh, what'd you tell him? You heard me. I said, no, of course not. Oh. Larry, um, what time you do at your boosters meeting? Oh, uh, 8.30, I guess. Boy, oh boy, listen to that storm. You know, I got a darn good notion to stay home. Um... Fred's up for re-election as chief booster, isn't he, dear? Hmm? Yeah, oh, yes, old Fred. He'll win in a walk. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't make a bad chief booster yourself. Oh, cut it out. I wouldn't have a chance against Fred. Now, Larry Bishop, certainly for the sake of the wife and the kitties, you'd make a fight for it. Well, for the sake of the wife and kitties, <laughs> I'd do nearly... Come on, Lazy, on your way. Now, don't rush me, Lou. Take it yeah, easy. Cynthia, Daddy's going. Oh, good night, Daddy. Have a nice time. Well, come on downstairs and give your dad a oh, kiss. Oh, now, Larry, I wouldn't. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. No, no, Cynthia, you stay upstairs. You might get in a draft coming down here. <laughs> well, good night, doll. You uh, better take her temperature, Lou. She okay. looked a little flushed to me at dinner tonight. Uh, well, don't worry about getting home early, dear. I'd... Oh, Lou, look at that. I'm not going. It's a cloudburst. Ah, don't be silly. You go on and have some fun. Oh, well, all right. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye, dear. Cynthia, what are we waiting for? Come on, hurry up. I'm all dressed, Mother. How do I know? Oh, you look just lovely. Only, uh... Only what? Oh, lipstick. Oh, lipstick. Mother. Two lips should be enough for any woman. Now, hold still. What time do you say you were coming? 8.30, and you've asked me seven times. Mother, he's here, but he's here. No, that's probably just your father driving home. Nope, I take it all back. That's Ricky. Please, early, Mother. To try and make it practically choking me today. Now, that's one thing that's going to stay as is. But I look practically adolescent. Good. Now, count slowly to 100 and then come on down. Gosh, it sure is misty outside. Lucky we don't have to bend on getting a taxi cab, Mrs. Bishop. Uh, Cynthia ready? Oh, you know women, but she'll be down. You've, uh, got a closed car, Ricky. Well, sort of. But we won't get too wet, Mrs. Bishop. My top doesn't leak much. Oh. 
Uh, what time do you think the dance will be over? Oh, about 12, I guess. But that's when the real fun begins. No telling where the gang will go afterwards. <laughs> yes. Hello, Ricky. Holy cow. Well, well, hello. You're a bit early, aren't you? I, I guess I am. Oh, boy. Mother, where are you? Oh, just getting your galoshes, dear. Oh, do I have to? Galoshes? Well, it is a little damp outside. Boy, what a dress. Well, I better get the umbrella. Oh, Mother, isn't he dark? Yes, he is, dear. Cynthia Bishop, what have you done to your dress? Oh, all I did was rip out the neck. You're not angry. <laughs> I'm furious. Well, I guess we're all set. Well, I have a good time, you two. Thanks, Mrs. Bishop. Good night, Mother. Good night, honey. And drive carefully, Ricky. Oh, I will. Louise Bishop, you have deceived your husband. Oh, well. Gee, Willie, you're practically the only man here wearing a tuxedo. Oh, don't he lay off, will you? Besides, your father says it'll fit me perfectly next year. What's happened to your hands? I can't help it. These darn cuffs, they keep sliding down, sliding down. I'm pulling your chest. I'm showing off. I'm not showing off. My chest isn't within a foot of this darn old starch shirt. Well, oh, 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 hello, Cynthia. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Willie. Hi. Hi, you, Ricky. Hi. Cynthia, not on a night like this. Did my father know you were coming? Oh, no, but I'm sure he'll be furious when he finds out. That's a lovely dress. Thank you. You're so lucky your mother can sew. Yes. She ought to make one for you, don't he? She can make clothes for practically anyone. <gasps> well, what are you standing there for, Willie? Let's dance. You're not going to believe this, but you're looking at the newly elected chief of the Napoleon Boosters Club. Oh, Larry, no. Yes, sir, I nosed <laughs> out old Fred by six votes. Of course, I felt a little bad about beating old Fred, but, uh, say, say, what are you doing up so late? Louise, there's nothing wrong with Cynthia. Of course not, Larry. I'm just waiting up for her. What did you say? She went to the dance. Larry, where are you going? Where am I going? I'm going to the high school and bring her home, of Larry, course. Larry, don't. That's foolish. You'd break her heart. Lou, why did you do it? Because it was the most important thing in her life, and I wanted her to have it. You sent her out on a night like this? You took a chance on... Someone, on... Larry. Finally, someone in this house had to take a chance. But, Lou, that kid is sick. There's a sickness here worse than Cynthia's. What are you talking about? You, Larry. You're sick. Sick with fear. Fear of saying or doing something that Carrie or Fred might disapprove of. Oh, Lou. Fear that we may have to move out of this house. Fear of Dingle. Plodding along year after year simply because you haven't the courage to demand what's coming to you. Well, maybe you should have married a millionaire. Oh, you know I never gave a hang about money. All I ever wanted was to feel proud of you. Feel that we were living our own lives with a little dignity. Dignity? Oh, sure, dignity. I guess the only way to be dignified in this town is to have money in the bank like you have. Yes, I've got a little money in the bank, but it's not going to be used to buy this house. It's going to be used to get us out of here so that somehow we can find a little of what we dreamed of before it's too late. It's too late now, Lou. It was too late the day Cynthia was born. Oh, how can you... You know, you can't just choose the things you want sometimes, Lou. God or fate or whatever you want to call it steps in and does the choosing for you. I'm not so sure that it isn't best after all. Wait a minute, No, Larry. Lou, no, you wait. Oh, I'll admit that every now and then I read about some doctor making a great medical discovery, and I shut my eyes and imagine it's me, but, but then I look at Cynthia and you, and I wouldn't swap shoes with the greatest doctor in the whole world. Maybe I've been wrong all these years, trying to make the best I could of it, but that's the way I am, I guess. Only I never thought you hated me for it. Larry. Larry. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
We'll bring you Act Three of Cynthia, starring Elizabeth Taylor, George Murphy, and Mary Astor in a moment. Our guest tonight, Amparo Ballester, born in Paris a brief 16 years ago, is presently working with Lillian Burns, who has tutored so many Metro Golden Mayor stars. I imagine you find Hollywood exciting, Amparo. Oh, yes, Mr. Keeley. I even saw a bullfight at the studio. Hmm. It was thrilling. Well, that must have been for Metro Golden Mayor's splendid musical production, Fiesta. That's right. A faithful, colorful canvas of exotic Mexico. And how did you like Esther Williams in the costume of a Spanish matador? Caramba, senor. She's so beautiful. The bull, he forget to be angry. And <laughs> now, uh, just a minute. I thought you were French, not Spanish. <laughs> I am, Mr. Keeley. Tell me, how would you have liked working in that picture with Ricardo Montalban? Oh, magnifico. An excellent actor. And every girl in Mexico is crazy about him. He and Sid Charisse do one of the most exciting dance routines I've seen filmed in some time. As a matter of fact, the whole cast is superb. And that includes Mary Astor, one of our stars tonight. I love the costumes in Fiesta. They're so gay and technicolor. In fact, I made a special trip to the wardrobe department to see Esther Williams' Mexican costumes close up. Mr. Kennedy here can tell you something interesting about their care. But I think I know. They wash them always in Lux. They were lovely. It's amazing. It's true, Miss Ballister. Hollywood studios make it a rule to use Lux flakes for everything safe in water. Lux Care keeps washables lovely while the film is in production. Afterwards, the costumes are stored to be reused or remodeled for another picture. But I have done that with my own things. Even a great studio practices economy with Lux, just as girls everywhere do. And we have real proof that Lux Care keeps colors lovely longer. A series of washing tests on many different colors and patterns. Those washed the wrong way look faded in a surprisingly short time. But those washed the Lux way stayed lovely up to three times as long. You have a, what is it, a saying here in Hollywood, Mr. Kennedy. Don't trust the luck. Trust the lux. Thank you for coming tonight, Amparo Ballister. We'll be looking for your first picture. Now, here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. We continue with Act Three of Cynthia, starring Elizabeth Taylor in the title role, George Murphy as Larry Bishop, and Mary Astor as Louise. It's two o'clock in the morning. The rain stops, and the moon's reflected in the puddled street as Ricky's jalopy purrs quietly down Chestnut Avenue and comes to a whispered halt in front of Cynthia's house. Well, good night, Ricky. Hey, watch out for that puddle. Oh, up to my ankles again. Gee, I'm sorry, Cynthia. Oh, it's all right, Ricky. When we were doing the conga line in front of Benny's barn, we were in puddles all the time. Yeah, but I, I think I'd better carry you to your door. Now, hold tight. Oh, Ricky. Don't worry. I learned this hold in the Navy. <laughs> it's a very good hold. You uh, haven't lost my ring, have you? Lost it? Oh, no, Ricky. It's on this chain around my neck. See? Oh, that's swell. Well, uh, here's your door. Good night again. I sure hate to go, but you better get in and take off those wet shoes. Why do you say things like that? Well, because I figured out something tonight. You did? Remember that day I walked you home from school? Mm -hmm. You didn't have to open your coat the way you did. I mean, you didn't have to prove anything. I don't care even if you do catch colds easily. Oh, Ricky. That's just about the nicest thing anyone ever said to me in all my life. After tonight, I wouldn't care if you couldn't dance. Cynthia, I... I... Good night, Cynthia. Oh, good night. Oh. oh. Well, what's the matter with you? Mother, he kissed me. Is that so? You feel all right? Oh, wonderful. Oh, Cynthia, your dress and your shoes. You lose your galoshes. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, do you know what we did? We're waiting, undoubtedly. And you go straight upstairs and get those wet things off. But don't you want to hear about it? Of course I do. Oh, Mother, it was spectacular. It was, huh? Oh, and everyone wanted to dance with me. <laughs> but Ricky wouldn't let them, except during the special cut-in. <laughs> then he kept cutting in himself. Cynthia, your shoes are simply sopping. Oh, honestly, the whole night seemed to go in just five minutes. Now, get out of that dress. Oh, and the orchestra. 
Art Goble, Miss Joy Boyce. Oh, just out of this world. And my dress mother. Three of the girls thought it came from... <laughs> Chicago. Well, they ought to see it now. Here, put on your robe. Oh, we'd like to tell you about Doni. Will Parker tripped and knocked over the punch bowl. <laughs> It went all over, Mother. Uh -huh. Now, you're going to get right into a hot bath. Be careful now, and don't wake your father. Mother, was he very angry? Oh, we'll talk about that in the morning. Oh, wait a second. The thermometer. I, I better take your temperature. Morning, Larry. Sorry, I guess I overslept. Morning, Lou. So did I. I, uh... I made the coffee. Can I get you some eggs or something? No, no, thanks. Uh, how's Cynthia? I don't know. I thought it best not to wake her. Like to look at the morning paper? Oh, your picture. Larry Bishop elected to head Boosters Club. Congratulations. Thanks. I'll get it. Professor Rosencrantz. Excuse me for quoting so early, but it is never too early for congratulations. My heart is congratulations. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Professor. But uh, even the boosters can make a mistake. Boosters? What's boosters? I'm talking about Cynthia. Oh, Mrs. Bishop, such a pity you were not there to see her last uh -huh. night. A princess, a queen. Well, it's very nice of you, Professor. How about some coffee? Uh, Ian is refusing coffee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ah, last night, the music, the dancing of young people. <laughs> Remember, Mrs. Bishop, when you first come to Napoleon, how I tell you about Vienna? Oh, please, Professor. Huh? Huh? Oh, oh, I, uh... <laughs> now, uh, now I tell you a secret. In the middle of everything last night, I said to myself, Vienna? What Vienna? Why do I think about things in the past? Here I am happy like a king. My studio, the high school... All those fresh young students, my friends. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I have made my own Vienna, Mrs. Bishop, right here in Napoleon. If, uh, if you'll excuse me, Professor, I've got to get down to the hardware store. Uh, maybe, maybe you dropped me off at my studio, eh? Oh, sure, sure, Professor. You see, my old car has a sprained ankle and the clutch is broken. Uh, the clutch, Professor. The <laughs> clutch, clutch, I don't know, I'm not a mechanic. Larry? Huh? Well... Oh, uh, huh. I'm sorry, Lou. Goodbye. Morning, Larry. Morning, Joe. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. So uh, you know the boosters. Boosters? Eh? I mean Cynthia. I hear she was the belle of the ball. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, good morning, Sadie. Good morning, Larry. Congratulations. Huh? Oh, she always was a pretty kid, Sadie. She? I'm talking about the boosters. Oh, oh. Uh... Say, we got a shipment in this morning. The boss. No. You mean Dingle's back? Mm, been screaming for you for an hour. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> Careful, Larry. He was saying anyone who thought he was indispensable here could quit. Quit? You'd better get right in there and square yourself. Sadie, where in the blazes is he? Telephone his house? Uh, I'm here, J.M. Larry, you're an hour and a half late. About time you realized I'm running a business here. Well, what do you got to say for yourself? I, uh, I, well, 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 okay, Jam. You asked for it, and, and here it is. Huh? I guess every man's got to decide for himself just how much he's going to take, and, well, I've had my fill. And it isn't a question of money. See, I never gave a hang about money, but a man's only got one life, and I think you ought to live it with a little dignity. What of course, you wouldn't world? understand about dignity, J.M., but when you're ready to go back to Florida and stay there and stop pretending you're running this store, look me up. Oh, no, look at And him, another Larry. thing, that $100,000 you gave me, well, I'm giving it back to you. You're a good businessman, J.M. You'll know just what to do with it. Larry, what are you doing back home? How's Cynthia? Oh, well, she's still asleep. Now, what is all this? Lou, don't you let anyone tell you I was fired. I quit. You're kidding. No, I'm not. Oh. J.M. got back this morning and he, well, he spoke a little out of turn. So I went right up to him and I said, J.M., a man has only got one life, and I think you ought to live it with a little, with a little dignity. Larry. So, uh, I guess as soon as we can get packed up around here, we'll be shoving off for Chicago. I can, uh, say, say whose hat is this? 
Pat? Oh, oh that one. Uh, uh, Fred isn't here, is he? Now, Lou, if Cynthia's sick... That hat belongs to Gus Wood. If you're trying to keep something from it... Gus Wood? Yes, dear, the real estate agent. You mean Thatcher's evicting us? Where's Gus? There in the dining room. Well, congratulations, Larry. Congratulations. And now, wait a minute, Gus. Is this on account of Cynthia or on account of the boosters? On account of all the great fortunes of this country sprung from real estate. Yes, so, Larry, and here's your receipt for the down payment, Lou. I'll see you in escrow. Goodbye. Lou. Larry, I bought the house. Oh. Oh, holy smoke, and me without a job. Uh, hey, wait. Gus! Gus just drove off. Oh, Fred, is that you? Well, well come on in and, and carry. Good morning. We didn't wait for your call, Louise, so I can well imagine the condition Cynthia's in this morning. Larry, I consider sending Cynthia to that dance unforgivable. Naturally, she'd be needed for physician before the day's over, but frankly, I think you and Lou'd better get yourselves a different doctor. And let me assure you, Louise, this has nothing whatsoever to do with your Cynthia's upsetting a bowl of punch over our Fredonia. Personally, I'd recommend Dr. Taylor. If you mention my name, he might make some concession in his fees. I don't know why he should, Fred. You never have. Well, really, Fred. Mother! Uh, yes, honey? Mother, why did you let me sleep so late? Didn't I... Oh, hello, Uncle Fred. Hello, Aunt Carrie. Cynthia, I don't think that oh, you please, should be running Uncle around. Fred, I had much time. Mother, I have a date with Ricky and the whole bunch of us are going over to Carnival Mill City. I have to hear something to before I leave. Oh, yes, Mother, I forgot. It's Danny Johnson calls. Well, just tell him I'm not at home because I won't have time to talk to him or anyone oh, else. no. Oh, no. Well, looks as though you've come to the wrong address, Fred. The child is obviously overstimulated. Come, Carrie. You see, where my patient, I put her to bed. <laughs> Say, Lou, do you suppose the kid really crowned Fredoni with a punch bowl? <laughs> One can only hope, Larry. <laughs> well, now, honey, honey, wait a minute. What are you crying about? Oh, since they have the house and your job on one morning... <laughs> I guess I'm a little hysterical. Oh, now, now, honey, it'll be all right. I'll see Gus and call off the house deal, and then I'll contact that fellow Collins in Chicago about the job. Daddy! If he... Oh, Daddy, I just saw your pictures in the paper. Congratulations. Oh, oh, that. Well, uh... Oh, Mother, oh. why didn't you tell me? What's the matter? Nothing. Now, now, your mother's all right. Kiddo, how'd you like to live in Chicago? Chicago? And leave Napoleon? Or well, Why? Well, Dad's had a little argument with Mr. Dingle. And I quit my job. Well, what's so tragic about that? All you have to do is go and apologize. Apologize? Me to Mr. Dingle? Well, well I'm sure he'd take you back. Why, before I'd go back, that old windbag would have to come crawling up to our front door with his hat in his hand. Well, Cynthia, you've always said you hated it here, that you wanted to leave. I? I said that I... Anyhow, a girl can change her mind, can't she? If you and Dad have decided to go to Chicago... Then you'll just have to go without me. I... I simply can't go, Mother. Don't you understand? Ricky and I are... going steady. Well, well, Louise, you heard what she said. They're, uh, they're going steady. Dad! Dad, look! Huh? Out there, coming up our walk. Dingle! Mr. J.M. Dingle! And Daddy! He's got his hat in his hand! Our stars will be back to their curtain calls in just a moment. We in the Lux Radio Theater enjoy your letters telling us what you like about our shows or what stars you hope to hear soon. And naturally, we're pleased when you tell us how much you like our product, Lux Flakes. Recently, we had a letter from Mrs. Robert Merchant of Arlington, Virginia, saying so many nice things about Lux that I thought I'd pass along her hints in her very own words. While listening to your Lux Radio Theater commercials, I often wonder if you aren't overlooking some of the most important uses of Lux Flakes. Not only my personal things, but my entire house is Lux. For instance, I wouldn't trust my organdy curtains to anything but Lux. I use it for my washable spreads, for I know it will help save their color, as it does my slip covers and washable drapes. I use it for the bathroom and shower curtains, too. Another important use for Lux Flakes for me at least, because I have a 19-month-old toddler, is removing fingerprints from my furniture before it's waxed. I use it to wash my lampshades, too. 
and last, but far from least, is Lux Flakes for dishes. For aside from how nice they keep my hands, they leave glassware and dishes shining. Oh, yes. I've never used anything else for the baby, from diaper days up to his present sweaters and cotton suits. Truly, I couldn't keep house without Lux, for there's no room in my home that doesn't know its care. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Merchant. Thousands of women like yourself, every day, are proving for themselves the truth of the famous Lux slogan. If it's safe in water, it's safe in Lux. Here's Mr. Keeley, our producer. The curtain rings down on another successful season. And before we say goodbye for eight short weeks, I know you'll want to meet our stars in person. Elizabeth Taylor, George Murphy, and Mary Astor. You helped us close the season brilliantly, all three of you. I'm glad you chose tonight's play, Mr. Keeley. Well, Elizabeth, we couldn't resist asking MGM to let us bring our audience a preview of Cynthia. Do you think they'll go to see the picture now, Bill? Oh, I'm sure of it. For one thing, there are scenes we can't show our listeners on the air, such as the amusing and romantic skiing sequence that you and Mary do in the picture. That was the first time either of us had ever skied, Bill. Yes, we learned to ski in six easy sittings. <laughs> you looked awfully professional on the screen, Mr. Murphy. Thank you, thank you, Elizabeth. You should have seen the rehearsals. They were strictly ad lib. <laughs> but it, it came out beautifully in the film, and all three of you were splendid. Incidentally, Elizabeth, I understand they're putting you right to work again at MGM. Yes, as a matter of fact, I just got off the set in time to be here. What are you doing this summer, Bill? Well, I'm preparing a new picture, which I hope to start soon. I saw your latest picture, RKO's Honeymoon. It was a lot of fun, Bill. Thank you, George. What are your plans for the summer? Me? I'm heading for Coronado. Hope to spend the summer at the beach. That is, if the studio doesn't put me to work. I'll be thinking of all you hardworking people here in Hollywood. <laughs> when does the Lux Radio Theater come back, Mr. Keeley? August 25th, Elizabeth. That's the last Monday in August. And between now and then, we'll be busy arranging to present the very finest plays and the finest green stars we can find. In fact, we plan to start off with one of the season's top hits, RKO's delightful and romantic comedy, The Farmer's Daughter, with its original and exciting stars, Loretta Young and Joseph Cotton. Well, that's a wonderful play to start the new year, Bill. I'll make a note to catch it. I hope everybody listening does the same, Mary. And until then, a very happy summer to all three of you. And a happy summer to your listeners, Mr. Keeling. Thanks, Elizabeth. Good night. Good, Good night. night, Bill. Good night. Good we'll see you in the fall. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again on Monday evening, August 25th when the Lux Radio Theater plans to bring you The Farmer's Daughter, starring Loretta Young and Joseph Cotton. This is William Keeley saying good night and good luck to you from Hollywood. This week, June 22nd to 26th, the independent grocers of America are meeting in San Francisco for the 48th annual convention of the National Association of Retail Grocers. In recognition of the splendid job they are doing in neighborhoods throughout the country to offer the finest quality merchandise at the lowest possible prices, we salute them and wish them every success. Elizabeth Taylor, George Murphy, and Mary Astor appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Living in a Big Way, starring Gene Kelly and Marie McDonald. Heard in our cast tonight were Gil Stratton, Jr. as Ricky, Carol Brannan as Fredonia, Bill Johnstone as Professor Rosencrantz, Leo Cleary as Uncle Fred, and Lois Corbett, Joe Graham, Norman Field, Bill Roy, Charles Seal, Noreen Gamil, and Stanley Farrar. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again on Monday, August 25th, when we plan to bring you The Farmer's Daughter, starring Loretta Young and Joseph Cotton. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.